right, Noob Spirit Podcast, episode 215. Jeepers, 215. Can't believe I've done that many. When I started this years and years ago with Chabo, I could not envision us getting to episode 215. Nevertheless, my name is Isaac, aka Shrek. I'm the host of the Noob Spirit Podcast. It's interviews with spearfishing experts, authorities, and characters from around the world. Today we've got Wally Gali. He is the owner-operator of GT Diving in Port Hedland. Uh, shoots some awesome fish and uh, a very interesting expatriated South African uh, living up there in Port Hedland. And his, his dive shop is right opposite the boat ramp. And uh, last week we listened to Robbie Peck uh, pulling into the boat ramp after being bitten by a bull shark. And Wally was one of the first people there at the boat ramp to help them get it all sorted out. So if you want to follow along with him, jump on Instagram. It's g.dive64 and uh, follow along with some of Wally's adventures. But we'll get to his interview in Two Shakes of a Lamb Star. Before we get there, um, the 2023 Freshwater World Spearfishing Tournament is being hosted this year at Lake Powell in Page, Arizona, from May 16th to 20th. Spiros from all over the world are traveling to compete in the largest freshwater spearfishing tournament on the planet. Uh, it's a very cool event. Some it, it attracts some amazing people, some great divers, and uh, it's fantastic from every account I've heard. I really want to get over there and do it. It's not going to happen this year, but possibly next year I could be over there doing Freshwater Worlds. Check it out at freshwaterworlds.com and uh, join them at Lake Powell in, like, in 2023. Next cab off the rank, it's a review for the podcast. Anna from the US says, love these guys, perfect info for a newly obsessed spearfisher like me. So good to have the privilege to listen in on some of these experts and benefit from their decades of experience in the water. Some great laughs and lots of inspiration for future adventures. Thanks so much. I don't know dive nearly as much as I'd like to, but I like to think I'm still improving out of the water as I gain knowledge. Uh, cheers for that review. A quick favour, go to uh, noobspira.com. If you've bought a copy of 99 Spira Recipes, I'd love to hear a voice message of what you think of the book. Go to noobspira.com, head up into the menu there, find the Nooba Stories uh, menu, jump in there, you can leave a voice message and leave a review for the book. That'd be fantastic to include in an upcoming episode of the podcast. Um, Travis has left a review on the website after buying the book. He says, most actionable book yet. I've been listening to the Noob Spirit podcast for some time and was extremely excited to hear about the 99 Spirit Recipe book. Fish species in New York may appear, uh, may differ a bit from the species in the book, but I'm frothing on the idea of trying each one. Thanks for all the guidance and your actionable advice. Guys, um, Travis brings up a great point. Um, doesn't matter where in the world you buy the book, there is a fish glossary at the back of the book that will help you find uh, something similar, hopefully, in your part of the world. But I believe we do have a couple of recipes from up around Travis's part of the world as well in the book. So 158 to choose from, guys. There's plenty there. Another review on the same book by Karen says, Hi, I recently bought your book, 99 Spare Recipes. I absolutely love it. So much great info as well as great recipes. My son started spearfishing nearly six years ago now, and it was really trial and error trying to figure out what to do with all the different fish and other seafood he bought home. If only I'd had the book back then. I I particularly love the focus on good stewardship as I always feel obliged to make the most out of whatever comes home. I've tried a few of the recipes and they are fabulous. Great job. Kind regards, Karen. Uh, she emailed that to me and it was uh, really cool to hear actually and, and a, a kind of a different person to review the book as well, a Spiro mum. So uh, very cool. Uh, my wife's idea has gained some traction. Um, if you do have a copy of 99 Spear Recipes, take it into your local dive shop or spearfishing shop or BCF and show them the book. Tell them how you know you wished it was on their shelf because you'd buy a copy there and you'd buy copies for your friends because um, some shops haven't been as receptive as I'd like and I'd love to get the book some massive publicity and get into some um, some bigger uh, mainline shops. That'd be cool. Adreno are definitely stocking it in all of their stores, so get hold of a copy today. But hey... Long enough blethering for me. Let's get into this interview. Wally Garley, GT Diving in Port Hedland. 
I can't wait to get into today's episode brought to you with proud partner adreno.com.au. The Noob Sphere podcast has been partnering with adreno.com.au for more than 100 episodes and these guys are awesome. They have uh, huge spearfishing mega stores all over the country. You can shop online or in store. Use the code Noob Sphere whenever you spend more than $200 and you will automatically save $20. That's right. Use the code Noob Sphere online or in store when you spend more than $200 and save $20. Bucks. I love these guys. I remember the first time I brought a spear gun at adreno.com.au down at the Wool and Gabba store and Adreno have been a huge part of the excitement that I have about spearfishing. Check them out at adreno.com.au. Use the code NoobSpero to save. Neptonics was founded in 1996, making trigger mix in a barn in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Solid gear that works was their founding principle and it still rings true today in every pull of a Neptonics trigger, in every snap of a Neptonics band, and in every whiz of a Neptonics spear gun reel, singing with the power of another big fish. Got a great deal, you can use the code NOOB10 to save 10% off anything and everything at neptonics.com. It's solid gear that works, equipment you can rely on. Save 10% off any order at neptonics.com when you use the code NOOB10. Got a sweet deal for you today, guys. Go to freedivingfamily.com and learn from Adam Stern and a select team of experts on different disciplines. There's Frenzel, Advanced Frenzel and Hands Free Equalization, Mouthful, Deep Frenzel Equalization, Bifinning Essentials. These are courses that will give you the 1% that will allow you to improve. Use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course at freedivingfamily.com. Again, that's the code SPIRO to get 20% off at freedivingfamily.com. Thanks, Adam and team. Love it. G'day, uh, Noob Spirit community. Today I've got uh, Wally Garley on the line. His wife was kind enough to uh, help us sort a Zoom connection out. Uh, Wally lives over in Port Hedland. He runs a shop called GT Diving and Marine. Um, he's a marine mechanic by trade, a passionate Spiro. And, but unfortunately, you're from South Africa, aren't you, Wally? Yeah, um, fortunately, yeah, <laughs> not unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, we've crossed uh, the ocean and I've been living in Australia now 24 years. Only 24. The worst thing about South Africans is they come to Australia and they take Kiwi jobs. Um, <laughs> where, we, where we are up here, we don't have... Um, many Kiwis. Too many of them. So, yeah, <laughs> every man fending for himself. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I'm an immigrant myself. I come from New Zealand, so that's why I was giving you a bit of stick. Yeah. Yep. So, the, um, the only good thing about Kiwis is they keep the Springboks playing hard rugby. Yeah, well, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Um, did you grow up playing rugby? Whereabouts in South Africa did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Zululand, which is a small – it's almost like a, a state or like, it's like a the province of Natal had this extra little piece in it. was called Zululand. I grew up there. Um, obviously played rugby up to high school level and then I was uh, uh, forced to volunteer to do two years national service and then I'd done my apprenticeship as a mechanic and I kept diving all in between. Grew up on the coast in Zululand at St. Lucia. Oh. So that's pretty much how I grew up. What's the spearing like there? Like uh, you got Mos- Mozambique's not too far away. Maputo is famous sort of place up, up a little bit further north like – yeah, so we were probably 200 kilometers south of Mozambique border. Yeah. So we had our probably our best bearing would have been 11 point, which you accessed from the beach or uh, from Cape Vidal. You went with the boat about 30K. Yep. Then we had Sodwana, which is world famous. Sodwana is really famous for. Uh, two and nine mile reef, a lot of scuba divers, and they don't like spearos. They try and keep them a, or like a like a, a mutual agreement not to spearfish on this one specific reef, just to keep it um, as uh, tourist friendly as possible, which does work to a degree. I must admit, um, there's definitely an agreement there. And um, Mozambique is the next step up next door. Um, so back in the day, you weren't allowed there, and then they allowed people in there. And um, it's not easy going there because all the fellows that, that live there um, all own a camouflage uh, uniform and an AK-47. Wow. So they just have roadblocks everywhere and just take money off you, and you just got to keep paying your way, which wow. is unfortunate. Rugged, 
I reckon it's a they do vary. It's a political hotspot, really, that part of the world and that part of Africa, yeah. unfortunately. And um, yeah. beautiful bit of country, though, isn't it? Every every South African I meet that's expatriated really misses the the country itself. Are you one of those? Um, I've been I've been back three times, and the last time I was scared. I was really I decided no, I I did not enjoy it. There's um it's just overrun by um, poverty and people that are, are really, really struggling to make a living. Yeah. Um, what I do miss is um, in the when I was growing up as a youngster. I, I done year twelve in 1981. So prior to that, we had, you know, we had we met people like Rob Allen. Rob Allen was actually um, worked for the Natal Park Sport. He was like a greenie, and he used to be catching people and finding them for doing the wrong thing and sparing in the wrong areas and that. And then um, we had Tony Hugh, who's in um, one of the better free divers. You can dive for ages. We had Craig Nielsen. Um, there's a few guys that have immigrated themselves. Um, they were from Richards Bay. And then obviously there's a lot of Durban fellas, um, Rob Allen included, that have immigrated. Um well, one time I was actually unfortunate enough to be revved by a great white shark at Levin Point, and wow. I was telling warning the fellas on the boat next to us. Um, the guy's name was August Tom. He, he actually bought my boat when I immigrated, okay. um, and I met a South African guy here in Port Edland, uh, Barry Arlis is his name, and I was telling him a story, and then he finished the story for me, and I said, "How did you know?" He said, I was sitting on August's boat and you came and you told us exactly what had happened. <laughs> and then I realized it's a very, very small world. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can't go and tell stories and lies about stuff because you never know who was listening at the time or was there at the time. So uh, truth be known, I don't tell many lies. So the story worked out good in the end. <laughs> well, me, me personally, I, I wasn't clever enough to tell lies growing up. I don't have a big enough memory to remember all my lies, so I, I, I soon got caught out. And I think in fishing in general, especially spearfishing, we take a dim view on people that even exaggerate. I don't think we like it that much. What do you think? Yeah. No, well, I always make the, the differentiation between a fisherman and a spearo. Okay. Fisherman... They will, they, I don't know, just look. I must say, at growing up as a kid, I did fish. I've caught fish on a fishing rod. I've caught sailfish. I've done this. And I'll just say, spearfishing is a next step up in evolution. So I've evolved. So I don't hold up another mat. You'll never see a, a sparrow holding up a fish he never speared. But you'll see a fisherman holding up a couple of fish there and he never caught them, but he wants to be in the photo. Look at the fish. Um, there's definitely a bit of that, that difference in uh, between what Spiros do. Um, we don't have to brag. We just take one photo of the esky and close it, and that's that's talk <laughs> enough. Fishermen, I don't know. Um, they got to carry on about it. You know, it's exactly the same um, when I teach people how to free dive and explain what I do and that. And what I tell them is uh, you need to learn the Steve Smith routine. Now, Steve Smith, being a cricket player, before the bowler turns, he's on his pads, he's on his on his helmet and gloves, and he gets everything perfectly right, and then he waits for the bowler to bowl, and then he plays his shot. Now, I say to fellas, don't be a fisherman. It's always that one biggest blue bone or red emperor, the biggest one you've ever seen, and the gun was on safety. Yeah. So then I say, you duck sound like a fisherman. If you're a Spiro, you didn't do your Steve Smith routine because the safety <laughs> would have been off. There was no water in your mask. Your knife is there. Your weight belt's comfortable. Your fins are ready. All you got to do, two breaths, equalize, snorkel out, and go. And the rest should just happen. Mm. And then they, yeah, yeah. So don't come and tell me fishing stories when you're a Spiro. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So in your shop, GT Diving up there in Port Hedland, um, you've got have you got a sort of a, a regular customer base? Have you have you seen guys that have come in, they're green as like they're just starting and they've sort of progressed and come along with you for a bit of a journey and 
How, how yeah. what, what's uh, that like running a, a sort of a, a regional sort of spearfishing hub for the the people in your area? So basically, when I came up to Port Hedland uh, seventeen years ago, um, I was buying like eight or nine, ten spears at a time and a bit of extra stuff because you know you you were way up. You, 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 Perth is two thousand k's away, so some of my mates started realizing that oh, I, I need it. Wally's got extra stuff, and then I started seeing there's a market for it. There's more and more people interested, and I can help out and teach more people myself, and uh, just to come along for the ride. And then we um we we started this little shop. When I say we, Debbie and I started the shop in South Headland, and then pure luck, I got probably the ultimate spot. It, my shop is directly opposite the boat ramp. I can wow. reverse my trailer out of my driveway straight across the road down the boat ramp. It is. Li- I am directly opposite the boat ramp. I so- actually, I remember, I, and I know this because I was chatting with Robbie, and we. I mean, I'm sure our conversation will go there, but they raced into the boat ramp after he had been attacked by a shark and come straight over yep. the road to you because you knew exactly what to do. Well, they asked me, uh, the, the fella that was uh, driving the boat, Ben, he sh- he rang and he was panicking on the phone and he said, we're coming in hot, please come and help. And I just said, what exactly do you – I was prepared. I thought they want me to back my car down the boat ramp, get his boat sideways, put him in and just race as quick as we can. So I, we probably would have got him to the hospital um, in 15 minutes, but – the ambulances arrived um, with the ambulance and, the, and, and everyone about five minutes later, and then they sorted him out on the boat before they lifted him onto the jetty and then walked him to the ambo. And that whole process took 40 minutes before wow. he was gone. I would have had him at the hospital already. I don't know what more damage we would have caused. We would have just thrown him in the back of a car and drove like crazy to hospital. South, Af- uh, South but, Africa style. So anyway, yeah, but back to the beginning. So yeah. we um we saw a market for the to open a shop and lucky for me uh, I got this rent offer and mm. So we set it up. We, we you can walk into my front or open obviously the front door, walk into the shop and go past the FOS machine and go and spearfish. You will have wow. mass snorkel, wetsuit, weight belt, spear gun, dive bag, dive watch, torch, spare spear, spare rubber, um, T tool. You can walk out of here and ha- be a complete uh, new Spiro. Um, I've had guys walk in and we were planning a trip to Monty's and I've taken two or three guys straight off walking in and say, we're going to Monty's in two days if you're keen. And that place they'd never been and I've taken them there and experience of a lifetime. I've got guys in here that are way, way more experienced and they buy a bit of kit here and there and they specific what they want, I can get it. And mm. yeah, so the shop had been running pretty good until recently. It's like yeah. really gone very quiet. And we, I mean, we were chatting, um, you know, prior maybe, and maybe something about this bull shark attack has sort of put a damper on, you know, a lot of people's ambitions to get in the water and start spearfishing, which is unfortunate because, you know, what happened to Robbie is actually really a freak accident as well. You know, like it's it's not a common occurrence. Yeah, look, um, obviously after. The, that incident then myself and my daughter who works in the shop when I'm not here or my wife, we, um, we've really gone out of our way and looked at how many shark attacks. Um, in Australia, in 450 years, there's only been a touch over 600 shark attacks, fatal shark attacks you know, in 450 years. Wow. America has got the most with 1,597 over goes back to the 1500s. Yeah. So if you really look at how many fatal shark attacks, it's not common. It's um, you, it's you look at other causes of human death, bee stings, life. You know the really crazy thing: two thousand nine hundred people on average every year get killed in Africa by hippos. Wow. And hippos don't eat meat. 
they're not targeting you as a as a food species. You're just in the way. You, yeah. You're trying to protect your crop or whatever, and they take a, a disliking to that. And mosquitoes kill over a million people a yeah. year. Um, up in Headland, when you go back to the shark attacks, which I think it's the first one we've had, um, and it's it's not even a death really. It, it's a shark attack for sure, yeah. but it's not a death. Mm. So obviously we we have that golden hour with as human beings when there's massive trauma. If you can get into good medical care um, within an hour, you've got a very good chance or anything, a shark attack, car accident, even people falling out of a, a parachute that doesn't open properly um, can be revived and survive it all. So um, it's very, very unfortunate. Um, Obviously, I have to be open-minded about the weather conditions. We just had the – we've had the coolest so leading into summer, spring into summer now that I know of in, in 18, 17 years in Port Hedland. Um, wow. It's never been this cool this late in the year. We, we should have been having 40 degrees already. Wow. And at, up to up to end of December, then the wind drops off. But – We've had crazy winds. It shows you on the willy weather. In the yeah. morning, it's a little bit down, and then from there, it's been willy weather. has been really, really accurate this year. Okay. It's always been. I mean, they, they call it a prediction on purpose. They can't guarantee it. So, yeah. um, willy weather has been pretty on the money with the wind and that. So, windy, um, big tides. I don't know the times that we have gone out. The three or four of us. We've done well. The fish are definitely there. Um, but definitely I'm wondering if um, these people have learned now to stay at home, go online, buy what you need, um, and not support local. Mm. Um, I think that's the way the coronavirus pandemic was actually designed to do, mm. is to force people to learn how to be locked up, I think. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's it's my other I've got personal views about it. Yeah, look, I, I largely try to steer clear of um, political controversy on the podcast, but I have strong beliefs about it as well. I um, yeah, I think um, some things have changed in our economy and the way people behave. And uh, fe- fear is a is a. I didn't realize how much of a motivator it was, you know. And I don't know if the shark attack, you know, of Robbie has contributed to you know, a downturn and how many people are spearing in Port Hedland, but it looks like a fantastic location to go spearfishing. When you guys get those neat tides and decent winds, yeah. um, the the bottom structure it seems to – and between that and the currents you've got running there, it seems like it's a pretty lively place underwater. Yeah, Port Hedland, um, definitely very, very active. We, um, we've got Bedard Island, we've got little, small and big turtle island, which are sort of in a straight line. They're only 40 k's out to sea, but Bedard Island is 100 k from the boat ramp. So you, you've got that reef structure. You've got um, Cornelia Shoals. We've got um, Geograph Shoals down towards a place called Bala Bala, yeah. which is halfway to Caratha. Okay. And then you've got the Dampier Archipelago. Um, what we did, what I initially did, I, um, I thought we could start a spearfishing club um, because um, we only had the, there's a couple of clubs down in Perth and the WA Undersea Club, they didn't do much for us up this part of the world. They were, they were although they called West Australian Undersea Club, yeah. they sort of just went up to probably as far as Geraldton. Okay. So I started a Northwest Spearfishing Club and I would have been happy to have 30 members on board. Um, in our end of our fourth year now, we have 152 members. Wow, that's so awesome! That shows that the, the, there's definitely the spirit. There's definitely the um, the guys that it's hard. The the problem for competitive diving or diving in a competition is the rostered work. The guys do fly in, fly out, or they do um, so many days on, so many days off, and if it so for us to t- to try and time good weather on a NEEPS on a weekend, yeah. I think we've only got about six opportunities in the year. So 
not everybody can participate. Maybe a good thing because we had 28 in one comp and it's, it's a lot of work weighing yeah. everybody fish and, yeah. and, and then trying to do the point system. And, and it, it's, we did it. Um, but so if you had a hundred people turn up, um, we would probably be in a bit of strife. <laughs> so we, what we done, we, we got fish bags. We, we weighed each person's, his complete, all his fish, one hit um, as a weight and then individual fish get extra points. So if you can get five or six different species, then you get bonus points. And then bigger fish like your Mackies and that, we cap them at 15 kilos. So trying to eliminate the luck factor that you come back with a 45 kilo Mackie or a 30 kilo Mackie and win the comp outright where someone has shot eight or nine different species. So we're trying to change it up that way a bit, which definitely does work. And, um, that's been the issue is that the working roster mm. to keep the comps going. And yeah, we, um, we've been, we've, we've, it's, it's successful. So let's just say like, you know, you're in Port Hedland, you've got GT diving, it's opposite the boat ramp. Um, you know, a person is highly motivated to start spearfishing. Um, they walk into your shop, describe sort of, what the process would be to get them up and spearing successfully. How would you go about that? Um, the, with anything, anything that we do, especially I'm going to go back to my apprenticeship. Um, when you do, you start your apprenticeship and then you eventually get to our age um, and older where you say they, are, they have the experience. The problem with experience is the result comes before the lesson. Mm. And if you think about, you know, when you start, if you hit, hit, trying to put nails in a piece of wood, you're going to hit your hand and thumb a few times. To, so you eventually get experienced. Not so, the result comes before the lesson. So hopefully, with with spearfishing, it's not a bad result. So you get the guys; they they've heard stories. They tell you uh, shallow water blackout and all those types of things, which for me is a good thing. If, if you don't want a young fella coming into the shop. And just assuming that, oh, yeah, this is easy. I'm going to put a mass snorkel on and I'm going to dive down 20 meters and, you know, I'm going to shoot all the fish available. So when they they do come up with what about how do I equalize my ears? Are there any dive courses? And all those are good questions. And that's when you can explain to, and I won't say a young fella, but a, 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 a new a new individual starting new in the sport. Mm. You don't have to be 15 to start spearing. If you've mm. never speared and you're 35 year old, you're still new at the sport. So yeah, you, yeah. your starting point, you need to know a few things about equalization, diving with your buddy. There's lo- so in my shop, I teach a lot of that, like just verbally talking, explaining, and then I offer come with if you if you're really keen. There will always be a spot on my boat. The only, the only thing that you have to do is um, there's a, a share, a contribution share towards the fuel money. Yep. So they ask, what do I bring? And I say, all your dive gear and whatever you want to eat. And then we share the fuel cost at the end. If we're going to travel down, down the coast or if we stay local, whatever the fuel cost is, we split it each or all, all three or four ways. And then all your fish are yours. If you've never got fish, you're welcome to someone else. Someone will offer you a fish. There's it's always that camaraderie with um, Spiros and help out. And then, or when you're actually diving, when you're doing on the job training, then what we do, um, this is every time when we, if we get on my boat and we're underway, then I say to everybody, start with the furthest person, and I'm always last. And I say, nominate your trophy fish. What fish do you want to get today more than anything? And it varies. And the guys say whatever. And then during the day, if you see that specific fish, then you shout to him, say, hey, hey, here's your trophy fish. Dive down. If you go behind this rock, whatever, there's a big blue bone, there's a trout, there's a red one. And then if that guy gets his trophy fish with a little bit of help or guidance, then they want to come with you next time and then obviously share the fuel costs. So, you know, it works both ways. 
Mm. You know, if you help teach people and then explain to them on the way, um, things that I, I like showing people is when they dive down, um, not to lift their head or turn their head to look at the bottom. Because when you stretch your neck, it's the hardest way to equalize your ears. Yeah. And so those little tips along the way you tell them oh. and what to do and what not to do and what – you know, the the best thing for me, I love telling people is when you teach them and they go – they get to the bottom and they spear that fish, now there's a race to the top. <laughs> and I say to them, why? Why is it like – there's no air left and you've got to get to the top in a <laughs> hurry. And then they, they say, oh, I don't do it. And then you video them and show them and they say, oh, yeah. You say, there's no need. You just keep it slow. Get back to it. So you don't need to get your heart rate up. But it's good when you can point out exactly what people do that you need for them to yeah. improve on. And then you it's right there, on-the-job training. It's like yeah. working – a trade with a tradie. He's there and he's showing you the ropes. I just love a functional and simple spear gun that I can trust when I pull the trigger. Killshot spear guns utilize the finest of kiln dried Burmese teak. Killshot spear guns also combine American made parts and fine craftsmanship to bring you accurate reliable and simple spear guns that you can trust fish after fish get thirty dollars off any kill shot spear gun at killshotspearguns.com yes and amen uber that's thirty dollars off american made performance spear guns at killshotspearguns.com i'm really sorry for this terrible accent brought to you by ed martin at killshotspearguns.com function first pretty design second Penetrator's dual action water channeling rail provides more efficient action and similar fins by directing more water flow down the blade. This eliminates wobble, meaning that you get way more bang for your buck, for your energy buck. Visit penetratorfins.com, use the code NoobSparrow to save $25 on every pair, on any pair. That's correct my friend, use the code NoobSparrow to save $25 on any set of Penetrator blades at penetrator.com. In the world of freedive spearfishing, there's no magic breathing technique that's all of a sudden going to get you down and shoot massive fish at depth and holding big bottom times. But there is a way to do it safer and smarter, take down more fuel to maximize the time that you have there. Learn at noobspearer.com forward slash Ted with Ted Hardy from Immersion Freediving. If you take down more fuel, you can stay for longer. Learning to take a bigger breath is not such a big deal. Ted breaks it down for you with a free online course at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. Take down 20 to 30% more air just by learning how to take a full breath. Again, learn how to do it free at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. Great news, guys. Adam Stern has made his freedivingfamily.com courses available at a discount for the Noob Spiro community. If you get on freedivingfamily.com, use the code Spiro, you'll get 20% off any course there's a bunch of sick courses on there there's an equalizing uh, stage one there's an equalizing advanced techniques um, video there they're two of my absolute favorites if you have any problems with equalizing go to freedivingfamily.com get adam's course and use the code spiro to get 20 percent off any course check it out at freedivingfamily.com i was going to say to you wally like i learned like i started sort of seriously having a crack at spearfishing in my late twenties. And, yep. you know, in Brisbane, there's not a lot of active clubs. There's the Sunshine Coast and the, the Gold Coast Twig, Twig Club. And um, I joined the Sunshine Coast Club. And, uh, but at the time there was some, you know, was, the club wasn't running like a hundred percent. You know, at, sometimes clubs go through seasons and stuff. What I found in Brisbane was it was really hard to get rides on boats. It was really hard to meet people. You know, like when you're brand new, a lot of people experience Spiro sort of see you as a liability. You're a bit of pain in the ass, you know. Like, you know, if you're working one of those FIFO jobs, you've just – you've worked seven 12-hour shifts and then you're back home for seven days and you spend two days, you know, like spending time with your family and then finally you get a day with the neap tides and you line it up, you go out – you can't really be bothered teaching a new person. So what you're describing to me with what you're doing there and GT diving in Port Hedland is that it's a really nice 
soft landing and a great opportunity for people that are in that area because they're getting, like you say, like a on the job traineeship. I, I think that's fantastic what you're doing there. Yeah, look, um, exactly what you say. I, I also, um, when I came up to Port Hedland, a uh, new area to me, and you you got to feel your way and find out, you know, the ins and outs of it all. And sometimes it's it's, it's heartbreaking because you you're not just offered come with, let you know I can help you, let me teach you whatever. So that's why one of the main reasons why I do it because. Uh, it's 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 probably um, more people need to be aware that the new fellas that are, are trying to learn the job um, or learn how to dive are not getting as much help as possible. Mm. At, 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 and it's not hard if you you let them know the rules from day one is like mm. um, your contribution to fuel. This is how we're going to go. Um, another thing that I do is um, I tell people I only drive my boat one way. I don't drive at home because, sure, I'm, I'm, I want to get there on, on to the where we're going to go and dive. I take them to my dive sites and my, my hot spots. But on the way home, let's say someone like myself got injured. Now, if I'm the only full bottle on the boat, and yeah. the other guys have never navigated. They don't know how to change GPS settings. They don't know, um, you know, you'd hope first aid is not part of it. But if there's a reason why I can't drive home, so I'll, I'll teach, I'll let everyone go. And I'll, show, I'll tell them, look, trim the nose up a bit, back it off a bit, do this, just so it's a comfortable ride. If the boat broaches a bit, you know, you need to try and trim it. And th that's kind of... It's not only about on-the-job training yeah. and how to breath hold and spear a fish. It's about the whole game. We were um, 130K out to sea off um, Dampier, and um, the guy on the boat, I, I was um, shouting, shouting, he was too far away from us. And eventually when he got to us, I said to him, what's going on? And he said, I couldn't cancel the autopilot. So the autopilot oh. had controlled the steering. And I'd realized then I need to tell everybody this blue red button right here in front of your face, if the steering doesn't work, you press this button, it'll cancel the autopilot. But yeah, right. that that's an emergency. Now I need to show you, go touch the screen, go in there, autopilot, cancel whatever or put it on standby and then see if you get this so i don't want to find out too late that the boats can't get to me yeah. because of a simple thing that i should have known from the and like i say for me that was the result came before the lesson and luckily not a bad result he could have chugged away from us and we're just three sparrows in the water with real guns we don't have a float he could lose sight of us yeah. real quick so I, I like I like I, I like the way you look at that, Wally. I think um, sometimes the 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 lesson does come before you actually learn it, and I think sometimes learning stuff the hard way, though, in the spearing game, as you know, you know, like it can be yeah. pretty dangerous. So it's nice when you get a soft landing or you learn something without any severe consequences. Yeah, no, uh, for me, uh, I see the benefit in showing people the ropes when they come into the shop. I must have done Holly Ann is very good at it also, explaining to people what you need to do. And she's quick to offer up, my, my dad can help you with that. My dad can take you to the pool and we can go and swim. And we, You know, like um, one of the things uh, a fellow was asking me is, what's the difference between carbon fins and plastic fins? And, and I said, well, from my own experience, I try and do 50 meters underwater in 50 seconds. So I time myself to swim 50 meters and fifth, so one meter a second. And I must try and do it as, as close to 50 kicks as possible. Now, when I say uh, one kick to me is a left and a right, that's okay. one kick. So you count. So with carbon fins, I got it down to 53 kicks with plastic fins. I had 64 kicks. Okay. So 
for me then there was now a little bit of a science to say I can do the same time and the same distance but it's less kick so the saving me the energy the the back of the fin is doing that last little half a, yeah. a sine wave which is is helping me l- do the next kick instead of just one bend in the blade each time um but then you speak to someone like Chaz Kennedy up in um uh, Broome from Karma 4 they've got their dive shop up there and he says to me they work out how efficient their fins are is when you're trying to hold a big doggy off the reef and soft fins are no good. You just kick, kick, kick for no – you need a stiffer blade. So mm. that's the experience that, that I learned from him. To, mm. I say to people, a softer fin is easier on the body, but if you're going to target bigger heavy-duty fish, you might want to go to a slightly stiffer blade. So – we have that knowledge and experience to pass on, and it's good because then hopefully your customer likes that first experience and he come back and then go with you for a dive and support the shop because if people buy online, which they can do so easily, um, then us smaller shops, we can't, um, we, can't com- the, we can't compete on price but we need people to buy stuff from us mm. to keep the shops going. Um, Adreno and them big mega shops still don't get a better discount from most of the suppliers. So it's, it's, it's competitive for all of us, mm. but we still need – that's why I like to have the, to, the hands-on one-on-one with the customer so that they have a good experience and want to come back so that they can not – like as you say – who do you – Who do you, you know, if you walked in, some guys say, oh, I'd like to go spearfishing. And then if, if someone just said, oh, the tides are too big and that was it, you would just, oh, what's the point? Yeah. But if you – someone have the time to say, look, you have neap tides and um, if you plan it, if a neap falls during two weekdays, then tell your boss you'll work the weekend so that you can have your weekend on that nip. You can mm. plan around something like that. And, and, oh, yeah, I've never thought of that. You know, you just thought, yeah, yeah. Oh, I only get that one day off. But have you ever asked your boss for a day off and offer him a crayfish or a red emperor as a, a thank you <laughs> in return? It works. And that definitely works. The guys come back and say, oh, I gave my boss a couple of crays. He said, go diving again whenever you want. So I'm a- that's good advice. I'm a big fan, Wally, of encouraging people into their local dive shops, um, particularly if there's good people in there that are pointing them in the right direction. And I, I think um, buying gear online, sometimes it does save you a bit of money, but the relationships that you build over time with a good local dive shop, they are invaluable, you know. Um, you can find out about Viz, you can meet other dive buddies, you can you can get connected easily with competitions, you know, like – there's all sorts of advantages, and, and you're tapping into that local knowledge as well. So um, where can people find GT Diving? I mean, obviously, you've got a Facebook page. It's GT Diving. You've got a, your own personal Instagram page. I see is um, uh, G.Dive64. Is that yep. when you were born, Wally? 1964? Apparently so. <laughs> I couldn't make it more obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you were saying you graduated year 12 in 1981. I was thinking, oh, I was born in 1981. So we're dating yeah, ourselves yeah. a bit there, mate. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was um, – I'd done uh, 12 years of school. And um, so, yeah, 81 and then 82, 83, done a bit of national service. I was forced to volunteer. Yeah. And then I'd done 10 two-month camps. And when I was doing my apprenticeship, um, one – something that – how things fall into place. Um, when I got to the coal mine where um, I, I went through the colliery training college to do apprenticeship mm. through advice of some people, and when the, the foreman introduced me to the, the tradies at Smoko, I got there and they were having – Smoko, and they asked me where you're from, and then all the questions. And one of them said to me, "Do you know Peter Yeld?" And I said, "Yes, Peter Yeld is my godfather." Oh wow! And he said to straight away, he said to the foreman, "I will have him." <laughs> and then 
that was it. I, I done my apprenticeship with the guy, Boot van Royen was his name. Very skilled tradie. Um, still today, I asked, will still, because of his way of training me, um, I will never hit, hit a screwdriver with a hammer. He told me a few rules and because he had um, probably equivalent to snap-on tools or style willy tools, wow. very expensive. And he said, I'll never ever want to see you just damaging my And the way he taught me about the tooling is I still do it today. And I said to him, why were you so curious about Peter Yell? And he said, well, Peter Yell builds the best catamaran boats in the area, wow. and I've just bought one. <laughs> and he's your godfather. So it was the same thing, you know. Just that little experience about him explaining to me about why he was going to be prepared to train me. The same experience like, oh, you know, if, if I'm you, you're in the shop and someone walks in and where are you from? Oh, oh, I come from Durban or something. And then straight away there's that connection to try and help him out. Or, mm. you know, it, it, it definitely, if there's a common thread, it definitely helps. And now as older you get, well, you go, oh, I'm from New Zealand, and you say, mate, <laughs> I would love to go to Greymouth and try and shoot one of those big tuna. And then, yeah, but they only run in August, and it's the worst weather of the year. But if you speak to this guy in advance, you might have two days that are good weather. And you can yeah. be So you say, so what's the plan? And they advise you, go there for a yeah. three-week holiday, be prepared for that phone call to be here in the morning. And that's exactly the, the advice I give out. You get that advice back. And that's why it's a two-way street, and it's definitely beneficial to um, hear from people from other countries, even other parts of Australia, when's the best time to go there? When's the best time to go to Steep Point? Mm. When's the best time to go to Dirk Hartog Island, Geraldton, those kind of places. And... Um, I believe if you if you're happy to share knowledge, then people are happy to share it with you, and yeah. it benefits everybody. Yeah, hundred percent. The rising tide, Wally. Um, so people can find GT Diving and Marine. You're on the Esplanade and Port Headland, opposite the boat ramp. There, um, it's good to see a stalwart in the uh, Port Headland diving community, Wally. I, I like what you're doing, and um, if I was starting spearfishing there, I think I'd be pretty fortunate to. Um, have a dive shop like yours just down the road. Mate, awesome chatting with you. I know you said you had to shoot off and do some stuff, yeah. so, but it was nice to chat with you and uh, and touch base a bit today. And hopefully one day in the future we can hear a little bit more of your story and lessons learned. Hopefully we can catch up together one day and you come and, come and dive. Have you ever been to the Monte Bellos? I was just over in WA in August, uh, October, and I made it as far north as Exmouth. Uh, we did a little bit of diving off near off Onslow. That was as far north as I made it. So I was not too far away from you, but far enough. So I'll make you a deal. If you're ever back in this area, yeah. I will take you to the Montebellos for a trip of a lifetime. Ooh, I'm going to have to take you. I'm going to have to take you up on that. I love WA, mate. It's a beautiful place. You guys have got a, a special thing over there. Yeah. No, it's good. We don't. Um, I think our whole population is two million people. And <clears throat> WA is half the size of Australia. Yeah, yeah it's crazy when you so, think about it. Yeah, we've got massive coastline. A lot of it's untouched. Yeah, beautiful. I understand there's some rules need to be put in place, but um, if you just go with the go with the rules that are in place and you 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 behave. No one can spoil your day or your dive trip, and it's really happy days. So, again, just for people, um, Wally, what's the easiest way to connect with you? Is it your Facebook or your Instagram? Probably Facebook. Um, I, I should probably be more involved in, in getting myself more exposed out there with all the different media that's there. But Facebook and my phone number is advertised. It's even on, on Google. I, I, I answer my phone around the clock. Oh, good. All right, Wally. We'll have an awesome night, mate. Um, thanks for catching up with me. No worries. Thanks, mate. Killfish with precision and power, sending shafts from a stable platform 
with kill shot spear guns made in the florida keys by ed martin you're buying american made dependable spear guns get 30 dollars off any kill shot spear gun at killshotspearguns.com yes and amen Luba. that's 30 dollars off american made performance spear guns at killshotspearguns.com it says if they're in the shop or on the phone they can cash in by saying crikey mate or the noob spiro podcast sent me check them out at killshotspearguns.com based in the florida keys this podcast is brought to you by aqualite.com.au. This is the best solution, bar none, for staying hydrated in the ocean. If you're a Spiro, it's an absolute no-brainer. It's a game changer. If you're doing extended trips and the cramp starts to set in and uh, the old body's telling you, hey, that's enough, just get hydrated and it will save you a whole heap of woe. It's a groundbreaking product that can help you to stay hydrated. It's got low sugar, it's less acidic than other options on the market, it's rapid absorption, help you to maintain performance. Dehydration of just one to 2% can affect your mental and physical performance by up to six or 7%. And as when you're spearfishing, you can tell when dehydration is starting to affect you because the equalization goes out the window. Get Aqualite at aqualite.com.au. It's scientific rehydration that Spiros know and trust. I know because one works there, and that's why we've set up this discount code for you. 10% off when you use the code NoobSpiro at aqualite.com.au. Check it out. Australian-made hydration products tailored for Spiros and a whole bunch of other people that suffer from dehydration too. But check it out at aqualite.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 10%. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the shorter interview today with Wally. I uh, really enjoyed hearing about some Port Hedland diving and uh, definitely an eccentric sort of character. Uh, always good to hear from guys like Wally. Hey, um, next week we've got another character. His name's Ben Honky. He owns Honky Outdoors. He makes awesome spice rubs and uh, and and all sorts of stuff actually for, for the aspiring sort of Spiro hunter forager. And a uh, really neat dude, very passionate and... Uh, yeah, very, very much in line with uh, the values that we talk about every week in the show. So come back next week, Ben Honky. Um, guys, if you love the show, go to patreon.com forward slash noobspiro. Join 50 other legends powering this show on an episode by episode basis. You can uh, jump on at three different levels and support the show you love. Uh, it goes a long way, puts fuel on the Noob Spiro outboard, and I'm grateful for every single patron we have. So check it out at patreon.com forward slash newspray. That's it for me for this week, though. Next week, come back, though. It's Ben Honky. Catch up. When you're starting to spearfish, there are a number of obstacles, and some of them are financial. Doing a freediving course is something that I've always recommended on this podcast. If you can do a freediving course with a Spiro, even better. But some of us can't even afford that. I've got good news for you. Today, you can do a freediving safety course for free at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. This course is brought to you by Ted Hardy from Immersion Freediving. He's got a passion for helping Spiros to die safer, smarter, and have more fun as well. This freediving safety course is practical and it's free. Check it out at freedivingsafety.com or go to noobspiro.com forward slash Ted and you'll find it there as well. Again, it's a free course just teaching you the basics of freedive spearfishing safety. Check it out, noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. Today's episode was an absolute banger, and so is our major sponsor, Adreno. Visit them at adreno.com.au. They have a huge range of equipment. You can find it at adreno.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro at checkout. When you shop online, you can save $20 on every purchase over $200. You can even use that code in-store at some of their huge mega stores Australia-wide. Price be guarantee on any Australian spearfishing equipment price. Again, visit them at adreno.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but oorah! When I say the words neptonics.com, I automatically want to say it. It is solid gear that works. It's the very best of spearing equipment and components from around the planet. Visit neptonics.com. It's solid gear that works. Visit neptonics.com. Use the code noob10 to save 10% off.